Sees Tolisso open up in space. Chance for him to shoot and Tolisso scores. Let's go. We've turned things around. Abraham looks for Willock. A simple counter-attack and a simple goal from Newcastle United in the 85th minute. Last episode, we completed the transfer of Dubravka to Schalke and this will go through in January. So we're going to soon be on the hunt for a new goalkeeper. Another super interesting thing that happened in the last episode is we changed the way we play in this series. We're moving to more of a 4-3-3, a more aggressive style of play. I feel like finally we've got the players to play more expansive football. So yeah, we're using a 4-3-3 now and that kind of showed on the pitch because we got some decent results against City and of course Chelsea in the Prem, but the job is not done yet. We've got to still keep pushing. Hopefully in this episode, we can break the barriers of the top six, top seven. That's my plan. Oh, we do play Liverpool away at Anfield in this one. That is not going to be fun. We're going to be wrapping up the Europa League group stages as well in this episode. So that should be interesting. A lot to get through in this episode as we near the January transfer window. If you are enjoying this series, I'd really appreciate it if you could spare a second and drop a like on the video. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. YouTube recommends my video more often if you guys can smash that like button. So go on there, drop a like on the video. It only takes a couple of seconds. And if you are new around here, subscribe for daily FIFA career remote content. Also shamelessly plugging my S2G shorts channel. It's where I upload like content, you know, in the shorts format, like a minute or under. If you guys want to check that out, feel free to do so. Click the I button on the top right of your screen. I recently uploaded a new one over there. Time for a quick press conference. The first one is about the weekly schedule thing, which could help us save some stamina on our players. So at the bottom, there's a weekly calendar thing. And this is exactly where I'm on right now. And apparently over there, I can change the days to like recovery days or rest days but apparently recovery days reduces fitness i mean it increases fitness but not as much as rest days so i suppose putting the days on rest could give us better fitness every single time but it kills the sharpness as well so i'm not entirely sure what's the best course of action here what we can try is before this game against psv we'll remove the training day and we'll make it like a recovery day and that should boost fitness all throughout the week perfect in fact we'll make it like um um yeah recovery day recovery day recovery day and rest day let's try this out and see what's up before that psv game but maybe this is a good way to get stamina on most of our games next up recall matthew longstaff in january and loan sean longstaff to get his overall up what do you guys think about this in the comment section i'd love to know it's not the most realistic thing to do but in terms of like performance on the pitch, this might be the smart thing because Matthew Longstaff is 77 rated right now with some pretty good stats. His overall stats look super balanced now and he'd really fit the team incredibly well. And Sean Longstaff isn't growing all that quickly. He's only up by one rating this season, whereas Matthew Longstaff is up by four and he's only 21 as well. So I'm kind of confused about this. What, what should we do, guys? Should we actually pull this off? Or maybe we could just recall Matthew Longstaff and start using him and not loan out Longstaff, Sean Longstaff. It's so confusing because these two are brothers and have the same name. But let me know what your thoughts are on this. I'm kind of confused here. But loaning out players seems to be so OP. Gaining four overalls within like half a season is nuts for Matthew Longstaff. Another question about the loanies. Recall Longstaff and Mbake because their potentials may glitch. Now, I chose this question because I have no clue what you're talking about here. Does this actually happen? Is, is the potentials of Mbake and um, Matthew Longstaff going to glitch, which means they'll stop growing? Is there something like that in this game? Because I seriously don't know. Mbake has gone from like a 62 rating to 68 within half a season, which is crazy. Don't go by that 48 thing. It's because he was a keeper first. But is it going to glitch? If it is, let me know in the comment section. Someone please explain this to me because we'll recall them if something like this is going to happen. So for now, we'll just keep them at their you know, loaned out clubs. With that, press conference done. Joe Willick has become such a crucial part of our team right now. I mean, he's probably higher in the pecking order than Buendia at this point, and that's crazy. He's only 76 rated, but his performance is on the pitch just insane. Last episode, he scored a winner against Chelsea, and that brings him the player of the episode award. Last episode, of course, we completed the sale of Dubravka, and he's going to be on his way to Schalke in the January transfer window. Maybe it's now time for us to decide who needs to be brought in for that goalkeeper spot. I've seen so many suggestions about Nick Pope. Honestly, I feel like he could be the man for the job. He's 29. He's definitely got a few good years ahead of him. Goalkeepers don't really downgrade in their overall all that much. He's fairly high rated as well. This could be the player we bring in. Plus, 
He's valued pretty reasonably. His wages are super high, I'd, I'd suppose, but he's valued at, at a point where we can actually sign him. So Nick Pope is definitely an option and we've got a younger option in Maisley who we've talked about already. I'm going to be scouting him now. We'll find out more. But right now, these two are players I'm looking at. We need to decide soon because the January transfer window is approaching. And of course, we don't want to be in January without a keeper. As soon as it's 1st of January, Dubravka will be gone and we'll need to bring in a keeper. For now though, we're going to focus on things on the pitches. We've got West Ham to play in the Premier League. We're in good form right now. You know, a draw against City and a win against Chelsea. Let's follow that up with a win against West Ham and move up the Premier League table. Now, you guys would have probably seen we've got a really hectic week of football coming up and it only makes sense to start rotating the setup. So we're playing Callum Wilson for this one, probably the first time we're using him on the pitch as a starter since his ACL injury. So hopefully he can bag a few goals. We've got Fraser, Longstaff all starting, Dummett gets a start. So a different Newcastle team, but we've got a lot of the key players like St. Maxim and Phillips and all in there. So I'm still looking for the win. I'm probably going to run with the 4-3-3 attack from the get-go in this one as well. Let's kick the game off. Not gonna lie, it still pisses me off that in this series Callum Wilson had to endure that injury because that really killed off his career. For us because he was killing it for me in the Prem. I remember him scoring like what 20 goals last season. Oh my god. The worst start possible for us. West Ham have taken the lead uh, at St. James's Park. I was just you know talking about Wilson. West Ham casually create a chance and score off it. Well backs against the wall again. I don't want to start dropping points man. We got to get into a consistent run of form in this series otherwise we're never going to finish top 8 or top 6 even. No wonder West Ham are performing so well in this game. I can't even get the ball off them and when I try and attack I'm literally bombarded with their three centre-backs. Of course they are. They're playing with a three at the back formation and that's just I just cannot break them down right now. Like look at this. Where am I supposed to go? This is this. Ah. Oh. Three at the back formations on FIFA just make me so mad, like honestly. Oh, finally we've broken through, but the pass might be a bit too heavy for St. Max when he keeps it in though. Looks to bring it inside, looks for Willock. He's getting pushed off the ball and now oh, there's three at the back. <laughs> I just don't want to play against it, guys. Honestly, Longstaff wins that well. Looks for Willock and this could result in something, a shot from distance. Joe Willock, oh my god! That is contender for goal of the season. I know I say that often, but this one off the crossbar and in, literally out of nothing, Joe Willock has pulled off a screamer for us. I'm telling you, man, there's something about him in this game. It's it's crazy. Off the bar and in, the, probably the most satisfying way you can finish a goal. Incredible scenes as Willock gets the equaliser against West Ham. And look at how close it was with the goal line technology. Unbelievable scenes. Willock scores his second in the Prem and it's an absolute beauty. We're 1-1 against West Ham at St. James's Park. St. Maximin, that's a very good pass for jo Callum Wilson, actually. Wilson, 1v1, let's go, man. Callum Wilson with the goal. It's been a while since we've seen him score. Callum Wilson celebrates St. James's Park, stands and applauds because this man has gone through a lot. An ACL injury, he's recovered. I talked about his career potentially being over, but nope. He's back at it again. He's going to be a backup striker. And that's what he want from him, you know, to score goals and help us out occasionally. And that's exactly what he's doing. Wilson scores. Newcastle United take the lead for the first time in this game. We're 2-1 up in the second half. Come on. Now Willock. Oh, Willock. The strength there from Willock. Laying this one off for Wilson. Has to score. Callum Wilson with a brace at St. James's Park. I'm loving every moment of this because this man, as we just talked about, ACL injury, but he's not given up just yet. He may have a lot left in him, guys, in this series. You never know, man. An injury to Tammy Abraham. We might have to depend on Callum Wilson. And he's showing that he's up for the challenge. Willick again. Every single game he impresses so much. An assist for him there. And we're leading 3-1 now against West Ham. And that should settle the game for us. Full time against West Ham. And I don't think we could have asked for a better result. A great performance. We came back from being a goal down. It was superb. A 3-1 win against Moyes' West Ham. Yo, hang on a minute. A job offer from Arsenal out of nowhere. Yo, um, we're not going to be moving clubs in this series. It just doesn't make, that's not how we run career mode over here. We're not going to be joining Arsenal, but I do find it funny they've come in with an offer. We're rejecting it 100%. I just want to quickly take a look at like where Arsenal are in the Prem. They're actually fifth, so they are doing fairly better than us. And we, by the way, are now in seventh spot. Arsenal actually have played a game more than us, but yeah, we're doing well. But nah, man, I don't want to join Arsenal in this series. One thing I do want to do is look at, you know, Arsenal's squad, what they have right now, just to see what I would potentially be working with. I think this way we can check their squad. So we'd be working with Burn, Leno, Aubameyang, Lacazette, 
William Reese Nelson. Saka is still there. Yep, he is. He's not playing all that much. That's that's interesting. Parte. They've got a fairly decent squad. They've made a few signings like Was. Why is he a right back? He's, he's pretty much a centre mid, but... Yeah, man, I'll stick to my Newcastle team. Getting this one against Fulham away from home out of the way. We should be able to get a win in this one. And we get a 3-0 win. Clean sheet. Dami Abraham with a brace. A hat-trick from Dami Abraham. Awesome to see. And it's a 3-0 win. Three points in the bag. You know what, guys? The English scouting project has been terrible for me in the recent few months. We're not getting any good players, guys. And I guess it's time to start sending our scouts to another country. I mean... If you look at our academy, it's it's bare bones right now. Dylan Miles is the only player, and don't get me wrong, he is amazing. But I think we need to start looking for more from the academy. So that's that's kind of what I'm hoping for. We've got a couple of scouts. We'll send Kyle Adder maybe to France, I guess. Why not? We'll send him to France to bring in some French talents. And just see what he can bring. Wait, we'll put it technically gifted. That way you can get like the best players, I think. So let's see what he gets in three months. You know what, guys? We could get some solid results in, in the month of December. I think we'll try and wrap up this entire month in this episode. Very winnable fixtures. Let's see how things go for us. We're going to try and smash through this one against Brighton as well. It's a home game. I mean, you expect your first team to get a result here. And I'm hoping that happens. Oh, we, we, it was really close. A 1-0 win for us. A clean sheet at home. But it was about that Jules Conde 89th minute winner that got us through. Unbelievable scenes, guys. Finally in this series, we're breaking the barrier of being like an 8th or 9th Premier League club or whatever. But we're finally 5th. It's now all about maintaining that position or even pushing for something higher. That's actually fantastic. Next up, though, we've got the final Europa League group stage game, which I'm not too fussed about because we're already through to the round of... 32 so this game is kind of pointless but you know what a win would be nice against psv it's it's an away game so let's see what's up just gonna use my second team for this one and get this game out of the way we'll sim it and just see if we can get a result i'll take even a draw in this one it's a 2-0 defeat yikes newcastle finished second in the group i probably should have played that game against psv now Hopefully we won't be getting a difficult draw since it's the Europa League. I'm I'm pretty sure we won't be getting like a ridiculously difficult draw. But yeah, we could have finished first in this group. That's just stupid on my part. Anyways, we've now got a pretty difficult game ahead of us in the Prem as we take on second place Liverpool, who by the way are unbeaten in the Premier League so far. Wow, I remember last season it was I think Liverpool who won the league and the only game they lost was to us. So if we can do that again, that'll be absolutely brilliant. Funnily enough, even though Liverpool are unbeaten in the Premier League, it's Leicester City who are top of the league. I know they've played a game more than us, but even if Liverpool beat us, they'll be top of the league. So that is actually a bit mad. Anyways, let's play Liverpool at Anfield. Anfield is never fun to visit. The atmosphere is always crazy. They've got Salah, Firmino, Mane, VVD. This is going to be a tricky one. Of course, we're rocking a pretty strong team for this one. St. Maximin, Phillips, Tolly. So basically our first team. I was in two minds whether to start Buendia or Willock. But I'm going to, you know, bank on Willock being a super sub for this one. And I'm starting Buendia. He's gone up to an 83 overall, by the way, which is sick. I think he is... Our second most highest rated player right now. After St. Maximin, who's also gone up by one, who's 86 rated now. Anyways, Liverpool, Newcastle, we're in a great run of form right now. It's a month where we can get a lot of points on board. And a win or even a draw here against Anfield, I'll take that. Oh my god, Salah is already through on goal. Oh, that's a big save from Dubravka, but we haven't gotten the ball away just yet. And we finally do. I think for this game, I'm going to stick to the 4-2-3-1 formation because... Liverpool are so intense with their press that we need to be super defensive in this game and just try and hit them on the break. St. Maximin, Tammy Abraham back to St. Maximin and we could be through on goal here. St. Maximin 1v1. Can he score? Oh my god, similar to Mo Salah, St. Maximin couldn't convert. Oh, that is so frustrating. That was our golden chance to go 1-0 up at Anfield. And I screwed things up. Oh, God. Buendia now looking for Jamal Lewis. Oh, space for St. Maximin. I'm not sure if he's on or not. Far post cross for Tammy Abraham. No, he was on. St. Maximin was on, but Tammy Abraham's head above the crossbar. We've had a couple of fantastic chances in this game that we just haven't been able to convert. And you know, these chances, these missed chances will come back to haunt us. Roberto Firmino looks for Keita. Ooh, oh, no. How is that a penalty? I got the ball with Conde. Firmino literally just came in between there. No way is that a pen, guys. Honestly, we need to take a look at the replay. That'll explain things. Fabian Shah. 
See, I got the ball there. You guys saw that I got the ball, but Firmino just barged into me for no reason. And oh my god, how is that a pen? Salah with a chance to put his team 1-0 up. Dubravka, please save this. I go the wrong way. Salah scores and we're 1-0 down at Anfield. You know what? This was going to happen. We missed way too many chances. Liverpool got their chance and, well, they've taken it. Wijnaldum, oh my god, Firmino. And, well, it's 2-0 it's Liverpool. This is getting ugly now. I just switched to the 4-3-3. And, uh, well, we're 2-0 down. I don't know what we're going to do for the remainder of this game because we're getting hammered now. The floodgates have opened and Liverpool are just shining. Good pass for Almiron and I see Buendia making a good run, but that pass from Almiron was so bad. Ah, man, the chances we've wasted in this first half, crazy. We should at least have had one goal, but anyways, Liverpool 2-0 up. We need a miracle to come back in the second half. You know what, guys? First things first, I'm going to bring on Joe Willock for Buendia. I just need something extra in the attack. Plus, I don't even know. Do we bring on Ryan Fraser? Almiron's having a shocker, so I think I'm going to bring on Fraser. And let's just see what we can produce in the second half. We're getting exposed, guys. We've just committed way too many men forward, and it's it's just, yeah, we're getting exposed. 3-0 down. This could be one of our biggest defeats of the series. Oh, Liverpool are going to make it 4-0 now. This, uh, it's freaking Wijnaldum as well. Every time, every time in career mode, Wijnaldum scores against me. What a joke. And by the way, he's a former Newcastle player. And look at the way he's celebrating, running straight to Klopp and like, what the hell? That's, uh, I mean, come on. 4-0 down. This is, I think, 100% our biggest defeat of the series. Liverpool have just outclassed us. Conceding that early goal just killed the vibe, killed the game for us, and well, that's why we're 4-0 down. End the pain, ref, just blow the whistle, there you go, the game comes to an end, and I'm glad, because my god was this painful, a 4-0 defeated Anfield. In other news, the Europa League round of 32 draw has been made, let's find out who we'll be facing, and well, it's gonna be Real Betis, okay, a trip to Spain. That's going to be a lot of fun, first European knockout game against Real Betis, first leg at St. James's Park. And then we'll be going to, of course, the Betty Stadium in Seville. This is going to be a lot of fun. Now, just to see who we would face if we would have topped our group. Let's see. Benfica. You know what? I think we've got lucky. I'd rather face Betis than Benfica. Well, this is, this is going to be fun. I'm excited, man. Newcastle versus Real Betis coming up soon in this series. We're simulating this one against Burnley. I just don't want to play against them, especially after losing 4-0 to Liverpool. Let's hopefully get a win here and see this game out. Come on, give me the win. It's a 2-1 win. It was close. We had to rely on our right-back craft to score a goal. Fair enough. Well, that's job done. Fabian Shah, our captain, coming up with a goal as well. Three points secured. Have a look at this, guys. The development plan on Tammy Abraham has been a big success. He's now got five-star skills and a five-star weak foot. That is awesome to see. I guess we'll now put him on like a balanced development plan because we don't really need to boost anything else. Maybe actually the work rate. Yo, that's something we can actually improve, is attacking work rate and make it high. I think I want to do that. So, let's make him like a poacher, and that'll boost his acceleration, a lot of good stats as well. And let's get that work rate up. Joe Willock has already got a 5-star skill move rating, and that means let's put him on a plan to get that weak foot up. So, the advanced playmaker, I think, makes a lot of sense. Another game in the Premier League that I reckon should be a win for us is this one against Watford. Let's actually put Buendia back in the team. He's very good in games that we've got to simulate because of that high rating. And let's see if we can beat Watford. We just about can, but an injury to Dummett is not good news because he's a, an important backup player in the setup. Let's see what's up with him. Wow, a torn calf muscle injury for Paul Dummett. I think now in January, we'll need to bring in a centre-back because... I'm pretty sure the only centre-backs we've got at the club right now will be um, Shah and Conde. That's not good news. So a centre-back is something we need to loan in maybe in January. We'll look at that. Our recent few results in the Premier League have been nothing short of staggering. And let's keep that going. We play Brighton next. I think I'm going to play this one against them. We're fifth in the Premier League halfway through the season. Let's keep this up, man. If top four somehow happens this season just imagine how incredible it would be but you know what let's not get ahead of ourselves let's focus on the game ahead here we go newcastle united versus brighton as you guys can see i'm going with what i deem to be my strongest 11 right now with willock playing ahead of buendia tammy abraham and all starting brighton are rocking a five at the back formation which is annoying but 
West Ham did it, but we of course managed to beat them. So I'm hoping for something similar here. Let's get a result against Brighton. Abraham now, chance for him to score. Oh, that is a lovely finish from Dami Abraham across the goal. Another goal for our main man, our number nine. Newcastle won, Brighton nil. A solid finish from Dami. How many goals does he actually have in the Premier League this season? Also, by the way, love the link-up play he had with Oli, so that was nice. And of course, the finish was class. I think we'll get to see now. 10 goals for him in the Premier League. Double digits, awesome to see. Let's hope he can hit 20 goals in the Prem this season. That'd be a good target for him. Good pass for St. Maximin. Here he goes on the attack now. Oh, the, that's a penalty. 100% a penalty. St. Maximin's just quick feet. You can't do anything when, when you've got a player as talented as St. Maximin going past you. Silly challenge from the Brighton defender. Chance for us to make it 2-0. Dami Abraham is our number nine and I'm going to take this one with him. Let's go right. I swear, dude. I I'm so bad at penalties, but I don't even know if I'm bad at the, just, or the game just guesses the right direction almost always. Like, honestly, Almiron going for goal and <sighs> that's a bad attempt from him. We should be 2-0 up right now. It's uh, Lewis, St. Maximin. Oh, that's a nice pass for Willock here. Chance for him to get it onto his right foot. Going for the finesse shot off the post and ah, uh, come on. I, I can't have... Oh, that is brutal, man, honestly. Tommy Abraham looks now for Tolisso. We know he's got a good finish on him, but maybe a cross for Abraham would be the smart thing. Of course, it is the smart thing. I think that's the first time I've seen Tommy Abraham score a header for us, which is a bit weird, considering how big he is in the box. We haven't really had the opportunity to score headers with him, but finally we do. Tolisso with a lovely... Uh, dink into the box and Dami Abraham with a solid header. He was of course ahead of his man so it made things easy for him but he still had a lot to do. Directed that away from the keeper and well we're finally 2-0 up. Now Almiron and the floodgates have opened up. Almiron with a chance to score and he drags it wide. How many chances are we going to waste in this game? Like honestly, looks for Tami Abraham. There's the skills. He's now got a 5 star skill move rating. That makes things super easy with him. Going for that goal. Oh my god Tami Abraham. He reminds me of Zlatan now with the stats he's got. He can like cut inside, cut outside, do whatever he want with the skills. He's got the weak foot. Such a complete striker to have in this game. Oh, here goes Tammy Abraham. There's the hat-trick goal. There's the hat-trick goal we've been waiting for. Tammy Abraham. I'm pretty sure that's his second hat-trick of the episode. In a game that we simulated, he bagged a hat-trick as well. He's in the form of his life. That's his 12th goal in the Premier League. Tammy Abraham with a hat-trick against Brighton. And three really, really good goals. The pace was there. The power was there. And the finish was there as well. We're 3-0 up against Brighton. All goals coming from Tammy. Full time and it's Newcastle bagging a big win against Brighton. 3-0. Tammy Abraham taking home the match ball. What a performance from him. We really should have scored way more goals than we actually did. But I'll take it, you know. Three points in the bag. But in an incredible run of form. Top four. You know what? I don't want to say it just yet. But, ah. Uh, I'm saying it, it might be a possibility this season. We're getting through the final match of the year against Fulham in the Prem. After this game, we'll be in the January trans window. We beat Fulham at the start of the episode 3-0 away, so at home, I'm still expecting a win. We had to rotate the squad for fitness purposes, and regardless, we get the win. A 1-0, a clean sheet at home. Okay, the injury to Buendia worries me. Let's hope it's not too serious. Man, this is fine. A head cut injury for Buendia. He'll only be out for the next three days. All good. So we now end off the episode being fifth in the Premier League, which is awesome. In fact, we've got the same amount of points as Man City. That's brilliant. Of course, they've got a far better goal difference, but we're in kind of the fight for the top four. Yo, this season could prove to be incredible for us in the Prem. I, I can't wait to see how things pan out for us. But of course, in other news, the January transfer window has opened up. We, of course, have completed the player sales of Dubravka, Gillespie, or Gillespie, whatever, and Turner, which means we've sold a lot of players and we're left with about 14 million, which is awesome, and decent wage budget as well to work with. And that means next episode, we're going to be on the hunt for a keeper. We have to. In fact, as soon as next episode begins, we're going to get in for a keeper. Wow, I think it's got to be Nick Pope, honestly. Maisley is too low rated. Nick Pope is the choice, I guess. Let me know in the comment section. Next episode, we'll make the final call. This time, I think player of the episode has got to go to our hat-trick hero, Tammy Abraham. What an episode from him. 
It's got to be him, guys. Let's be real. Next episode, boys, we've got a lot of business to get through. We need to bring in a goalkeeper. Otherwise, we're going to have to use that 73 rated keeper we've got. Apart from all that, I might try and loan in a few players because we're in desperate need for more squad depth with that injury to Domit. So a lot to look forward to in this series. And yeah, if you're enjoying the series, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop a like on the video. Helps the channel grow. Subscribe if you're new around here for daily career mode content. And well, I'll catch you all next time.